time is often considered priceless in the world of 3D modeling due to how fast-paced it often needs to be, where tight deadlines and clients demanding quick turnarounds are the norm. So you, yes you, you are probably constantly seeking shortcuts to speed up your workflow. And this is where texture projection comes to play, an effective technique that challenges the very essence of traditional 3D modeling, especially when it comes to creating environments. But can it truly replace it, or at least to a certain extent? To answer this question, in today's video we're gonna delve deeper into the subject and compare texture projection to simple 3D modeling to figure out which one is better for which task and to see if texture projection is really that impressive. Now, here's the thing. Texture projection is not an entirely different modeling approach. It is more like a shortcut or an extension of an already rich world of 3D modeling. You see, traditional 3D modeling at its core is about manipulating what is known as vertices, edges, faces, or primitive shapes such as cubes, cylinders, and so on. And you can use it to create different things like characters, weapons, vehicles, environments, and much more. As for texture projection, it is a way to cheat when it comes to modeling in a sense. And this is by applying pre-existing textures to 3D models, creating the illusion that the model has more details than it actually does. So to help you understand it even further, imagine you are trying to model an air conditioner. So instead of trying to model every tiny bolt, fan, or texture paint every little dust and rust, texture projection lets you cheat a little. By applying photos that already have all those details, tricking the viewer's eyes into believing the model is incredibly detailed. But this works best where there isn't any close-up shots, because this will be obvious. To apply the photos to a 3D model, we use a technique that is known as UV mapping, which I'm sure you are already familiar with. But for those who don't, it is a way to assign the 2D images to a different surface, I mean a surface on the model, and decide which photo is gonna fit on which area. This is also the solution to align the textures accurately, to achieve a visually pleasing representation. Before we continue, let me quickly talk about with Poly, our video sponsor. With Poly is an incredible platform that provides a wide variety of ready-to-use textures, ranging from metallic to dirt, fabrics, and even wood textures. However, what truly distinguishes this platform from the others is not just the fact that it has textures, as many platforms do. With Poly is unique because all the textures it has on the platform are produced using AI. You can either choose to use an already generated texture or generate one yourself by trying a simple prompt. Additionally, the With Poly platform includes various features, which makes the process of working with it very easy. After trying a prompt, you can set the resolution up to 8K and you can choose which style you want to implement between general, fabric, shiny, and more. With Poly also allows you to upload an image and use it as the color map, allowing you to create a texture with all the maps from just one image. You can also upscale textures and make them seamless very easily, and you can generate PBR maps that can be used in any 3D software. You can use With Poly for free or you can subscribe to a $20 membership plan to access additional features, including the ability to export to 32-bit EXR PBR maps and up to 8K resolution. And you can also enjoy a full and unrestricted royalty-free commercial license that never expires. So, if you are interested in with Poly, you will find the necessary links in the description. Another common technique is texture baking. The idea behind this one is transforming all the assigned photos into one final texture map, and you can do this with any desired resolution, but it can't be higher than the assigned photos, to make them easier to use and to be able to transform the textures into any 3D software with ease. So while modeling has served as the backbone for the 3D industry for many decades, texture projection also served as a prominent technique in different VFX projects and video games. This is the case because it is very useful and you don't even notice it. Plus, it is a very efficient way to save time. You see, the entire idea behind it is to fake details within the shot. For example, using photos of windows as textures in the buildings, which will be used in the background since they are far away from the camera. 
and the good thing is, they will look the same as if they were modeled manually with every detail. And this will save 3D artists and game developers a lot of valuable time. To illustrate this, let's imagine a situation where we are trying to build a city that looks realistic in a software like Blender, Maya, Max, or any other 3D software. Instead of modeling each window, balcony, air conditioner, ladder, and other details manually, we can capture photographs or real window photos and project them onto the buildings as textures. And since these will be background props and would be far away from the camera, the result will appear just fine as we said. So these techniques can be viewed as two sides of the same coin, except that in one you will do further modeling compared to the other. And this does lead to a series of advantages and weaknesses. Firstly, for texture projection, the speed and efficiency are hard to miss since most of the details are based on the photos, which saves a lot of time and effort for the artist. Additionally, it allows you to easily generate numerous repetitive assets with a high level of detail, making it well suited for projects that prioritize fast turnarounds. For example, if you need 10 different air conditioner models, it is faster and simpler to just use different photos and switch their place in the UVs. However, that comes with a cost. In fact, it might be a big cost in some cases. For instance, it is mostly a technique which relies on photos, but they may not always be available or suitable for some projects, and the 3D models can only be as good as the photos, which can make it harder to create unique and highly customizable assets. As it is the case with traditional modeling, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Speaking of modeling, it is pretty much the opposite of what we just presented. First, it is a time-consuming process, and if you did some modeling, you will realize why. And this is the case especially when it comes to complex 3D models, and it will take forever to generate a lot of props with it. But on the other hand, you can model anything you want, and the quality won't be limited, so you can create close-up shots and extremely detailed models that you can look at from different angles and still maintain the quality you desire. As for the quality of the objects, modeling mostly has an edge when it comes to this as well. The pre-existing textures can have some inherent limitations in terms of resolution, and the quality of the original photos used for projection plays a huge role in determining how close the object can be to the camera, whereas in traditional modeling, it offers the flexibility to choose texture sizes according to the artist's preferences without being constrained by the resolution limitations. On top of that, it might be a bit trickier to get good lighting on a texture projection models. But by learning how to generate decent normal maps and where to place the light sources, we can generally get away with it, to a certain extent. Additionally, modeling allows us to add any level of detail we desire and having total control of what these details might be. So this means we have a general rule. Texture projection can be used for background models that we don't give a lot of attention to, whereas characters and hero props, such as weapons, vehicles, and characters need further attention and should be modeled using traditional 3D modeling. It is all about how important the 3D model is to the story and how close it will be to the camera, as well as how unique the art style is. I mean, I can't imagine using texture projection when working on stylized video games or stylized animations. Unless you're gonna use AI textures or something like that. Please keep in mind, while this is a general rule, there might be some exceptions. Also, one of the reasons why, as a 3D artist, you want to use texture projection instead of traditional modeling is hardware requirements. So, depending on what machine you have, it might be very hard for some computers to render certain projects, or even have enough capacity to work on the 3D models themselves, especially when working on big projects and large environments. So if you are working on a big project which has a lot of environment elements, you know it's gonna take a lot of hardware power. So you often will have to rely on texture projection, as it is less expensive and easier to handle, since the details are photos and not 3D geometry in general. I mean it is like cubes and cylinders and stuff. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also take a look at some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you.
and the next one.